There are people who are more comfortable playing for an audience than for a microphone, that the microphone actually intimidates them. I am not ashamed to tell you I'm exactly the opposite. I'm much more comfortable in front of a microphone than I am in front of the audience. I'm Simon James. I'm a professor of violin at the San Francisco Conservatory of Music. When I was a kid, I was at Kunung Heights Primary School in Melbourne, Australia and we had a field trip to hear the Melbourne Symphony play at the Melbourne Town Hall. At the time I had no idea what I was in for and uh, when I look back it, it was a life-changing experience from school music as a kid. Manion was playing with the Bath Festival Orchestra. So the very first time I ever heard an orchestra or a violin, frankly, was Yehudi Manion. Pretty good. It was life-changing. And pretty much I knew from that moment that I was attracted to the violin. I really wanted to play it. And yet it took a couple of years to talk my parents into it because I was very keen at, on football and other things that most kids do. And so they thought it might be a passing fad, but I think I drove them nuts. Eventually they found a violin teacher for me out of the phone book and I started taking lessons. Some people did paper rounds and some people bagged groceries. I played movies. I played in the studios in Australia as a kid and I did uh, a couple of very interesting things like Mad Max. The original Mad Max, I did uh, Break a Morant, Gallipoli, a lot of the old Peter Weir movies that, uh, that everyone's probably familiar with. You know, like a lot of kids, they dream of having this big solo career, and I, I figured out rather quickly that the position was actually filled, and that was not going to be something that uh, I had as an option. I actually was very fortunate to get straight out of school in New York and actually get a job in the Melbourne Symphony. The Elton John experience was actually done, um, the Live From Australia album that he did uh, was with the Melbourne Symphony and I was, I was on that tour. So I got to play cricket with Elton John and, and sailing. Wonderful guy, hardest working, great artist. I was in the first violin section of the Melbourne Symphony for about two years and decided to actually come back to the States and try my luck. Seattle was the, was the first job that I got and I tried several auditions. It turned out to be right time, right place for me. The orchestra uh, over the, the time that I was there went from good to truly spectacular. Seattle Symphony had a series called Celebrate Asia where we would perform Pacific Rim composers uh, music with a, a, lot of, a lot of Asian repertoire. But A.R. Rahman came to the Seattle Symphony. A.R. Rahman did uh, the music to Slumdog uh, Millionaire. The piece that we played was a violin solo called uh, Flying Lotus. Playing this wonderful piece was, was just, it was great. I loved doing it. So that was through the symphony. I played with Billy Joel because um, Jean-Luc Ponty, the uh, French violinist, was sick and uh, they were doing tours that actually went through Washington State. So they called the Seattle Symphony to see if there was anybody that could actually fill in for Ponty. And I don't think the symphony folks actually knew who Ponty was, <laughs> which was kind of funny. I'm a huge fan. I love, I love Jean-Luc Ponty. So they said, well, Simon did this, this, this tour with Elton John. Maybe he'll do it. So I said, sure, I'll do it. The Seattle Symphony parted ways with the AFFM for a multitude of reasons that had nothing to do with recording, but it meant that we were actually able to negotiate our own fees. The first movie I did was a movie called Lord of Illusions. Scott Bakula was in it. The second movie that came to Seattle was actually Mr. Holland's Opus, and then Die Hard with a Vengeance. A whole bunch of uh, Stephen King movies. I've got a, a bunch of solos in a movie called Thinner which had a bunch of gypsy solos with cymbal and going on and everything. It was, it was really fun. Probably the last movie that I did was The Revenant. So far as the video games are concerned, uh, probably the biggest ones we've done are uh, Halo and World of Warcraft. I love playing opera. I uh, got to play Concertmaster for The Ring Cycle and, and I've done The Ring Cycle so many times and that's got to be a career highlight. I loved Spade Jenkins, the uh, 
general director of Seattle Opera, and he was just a, a wonderful, inspired guy. I loved it. It was great. The other thing I still continue to do is I'm a member of the Australian World Orchestra, and that is truly one of the most spectacular ensembles on the planet. You know, we've got principal players from Berlin, from, uh, from Vienna, Leipzig Gewandhaus, um, people from all over the world uh, in the great orchestras who get together maybe once or twice a year. And uh, the camaraderie is, is spectacular. The fact that they're all Australian and distinguished musicians and artists from around the world. I mean, we play with great conductors and the music making is, is amazing. I love to teach. You know, the funny thing is sharing music with somebody who's unfamiliar with it or knows the music but hasn't learned it. I mean, they've heard it a thousand times. Working uh, with a student through a piece that they want to play, it's invigorating. You know, first, it's nice to be asked what I think. <laughs> you know, it's when you get your orchestra job, you've always got uh, somebody on the box telling you what to do most of your life. And, and that's wonderful. It's, it is wonderful. At a certain point, you can stop thinking about what to do because somebody's always telling you. So I like that. I still, I, the, teaching the violin is awesome. I love doing it. My students have enjoyed a lot of success. The Grimier competition in Brussels, one of my students, Yvette Kraft, uh, was a top prize winner there. A dozen of my students have won the MTNA Nationals in the last 15 years. One of my former students is Rachel Allen Wong, has actually won the Avery Fisher Career Grant this year, uh, the first Baroque violinist to ever do it. I've got students that got their first paychecks from me in the Cleveland Orchestra, the Pittsburgh Symphony, Seattle Symphony, uh, LA Phil, New York Philharmonic. You know, my daughter's in the Minnesota Orchestra, and my other daughter's done some subbing in Seattle and in Atlanta, also former students. So a lot of students have really got some amazing careers going. One of the things I like to tell all my students at this point is doors open before your eyes every once in a while and you, if you don't see them, you don't walk through them. But if you're looking, it's amazing the direction your career can go in. You, know, you can't expect that things are actually gonna go in a straight line. Uh, I had avoided teaching my entire career. I didn't wanna teach because I've got my own problems as a violinist and yet the door opened and I walked through it and it's changed my life in a good way. If you don't risk Nothing happens. You might fail, but what happens if you don't? Doing whatever you do as well as you can. I mean, there have been some slasher horror movies that I've done that I really have no interest in seeing, but my part of them was done as best as it could be. I feel good about our profession. I know things don't look exactly great right now, but as, a, you know, as I was saying to one of my students before, a lot of people are retiring right now because you know it's a, it's become an ideal time to do it. Well, what does that mean? It means there are going to be a whole bunch of openings. I remain completely optimistic about our profession. I'm incredibly optimistic about San Francisco Conservatory of Music. I love it here. I feel like this school is flexible, and I think that it's evolving. The way we played Bach 20 years ago to the way we play Bach today, it's changed, it's evolved, and so it should. Just because Yasha Heifetz does something. That's not a reason to do it. That's because that's Yasha Heifetz's way. Find your own way. Be an artist now. I think that's, that's a really important thing for people to know. You should be an artist now. Don't wait. I've been teaching for quite a long time and I'm perfectly thrilled to be here. I like San Francisco very much. I like the people. Our faculty here is much more uh, versatile than most of the other faculties in the country. And I feel like I'm surrounded by adaptable people, people who think out of the box. I felt completely supported here by Jonas Wright, the dean, and David Stoll, the president, Ian Swenson, the head of the violin department, Dimitri Morath, the, the chamber music coach, fabulous guy, and wonderful artist, Jennifer Cobb, the string chair. I mean, all these, these wonderful people, I think anybody would be lucky to come here.